Every summer, master artists from around the world gather in Santa Fe, New Mexico. The International Folk Art Market showcases art that preserves cultural traditions and brings economic opportunities to poor communities worldwide. Special correspondent Kathleen McCleary has our story. Part of Canvas, our ongoing arts and culture series. In her rural New Mexico studio, Native American jewelry maker Mary Louise Tafoya slices the raw materials that will form intricate mosaic inlays for necklaces, earrings, and bracelets. I'm wearing a piece right now, you see. And a lot of people think they're painted. And I tell them, no, they're not painted. They're inlaid with natural stones and shells. Her husband, Lorenzo, helps, sanding, grinding, and polishing. Tafoya's work is exhibited in museum shops and galleries throughout the Southwest and beyond. Prices start at $35 for a small pair of earrings and can go up to $4,000 for a large necklace. Still, being invited to the world's largest folk art market came as a surprise. I was amazed. I was excited. I said, me, little me, how did I ever get up there? The couple spent months creating more than 100 items to bring to Santa Fe. Each July, those chosen flock to New Mexico's capital. This year, more than 170 from 52 countries. They were welcomed in a parade around the city's historic plaza at the start of a three-day celebration of global art and culture. Stuart Ashman is the market's CEO. Please say salam to Ethiopia. This is a recognition on the world stage, if you will. You know, this is the major leagues of folk art. And there are hundreds, if not thousands, of Native American jewelers, and she got picked. The Tafoyas live on the Kiwa Pueblo, also known by its Spanish name, Santa Domingo. This rural community of 3,000 traces its history to ancient people, who lived in this part of northern New Mexico more than 800 years ago. I grew up with it. Tafoya's tribe has long been known for its jewelry. Her designs are inspired by her ancestors. Preserving cultural heritage is one reason artists are chosen to attend, says Ashman. Everything has to be handmade. It must be rooted in tradition, whether it's the tradition as it was done a 1,000 years ago or whether that tradition has evolved Quality and authenticity are key. A rigorous selection process results in only the best being selected. Everybody who is here in Santa Fe for the first time, can you please stand up? Newcomers like Tafoya attend training sessions before the market begins and get tips on how to tell their story to potential buyers, from high-end collectors to shoppers looking for the perfect gift. Consultant Karen Gibbs leads the effort. Customers are not here just to buy a product. They want to buy a product that has a story to it, that has, um, that has a why behind it. It's just what comes up from here. Tafoya exchanged stories with a gold filigree jewelry maker from Sardinia and a bead worker from the Maasai tribe in Kenya. I'm learning a lot. This is something different for me. I have five people with me. When the gates open, crowds flood in. Over the three-day weekend, about 25,000 people visit this mecca for handmade art. This is the 16th anniversary of the market and the first to include U.S. artists, among them Mary Tafoya. It's an international folk art fair. How could you exclude the United States when there are so many incredible artists here? But you did for 15 years. The real reason is that U.S.-born artists have opportunities that people from these other countries don't have. A stroll through the maze of booths feels like a trip around the world, from paintings done with sticks by Aborigines in central Australia, to magic carpets woven in Uzbekistan's ancient city of Bukhara. This year's honorary chair is Indaba Mandela, activist and 37-year-old grandson of the South African leader. It's not just about New Mexico, right? It's about the world. At a South Africa booth, Mandela checked out retro eyewear, inspired by traditional Zulu beadwork. What I'm seeing here is a celebration of the diversity of humanity. When we come together, we'll be able to eliminate our weaknesses. The artists take home, on average, 85% of their sales. Unlike many festivals held around the country on summer and fall weekends, this one promotes social change, and 90% of the artists filter proceeds back home, 
to provide jobs, empower women, and revive traditional crafts. Market officials say the sales have touched the lives of more than a million people worldwide. Some of these people make more than a year's salary in a weekend. And so obviously if you have a great deal of prosperity, you come back and you share that. The Tafoyas see the market as a way to give back to their community too, using their success to motivate up and coming Pueblo artists. I think that's kind of what we want those artists to say. Go the extra mile, see what you can do on your own. You know, show your talent and don't be afraid of it. Market goers spend more than $3 million over the three days. But for Ashman, a purchase here is more than a financial transaction. We say it's not a market, it's a miracle. Art absolutely connects people and transcends all of those issues that divide people. That's really the ultimate goal. You can say this is what world peace looks like. Or perhaps it's a small start. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Kathleen McCleary in Santa Fe, New Mexico.